this is one of the easiest succulents you can grow. It pretty much takes care of itself and is a fantastic plant for bigger gardens. Agave attenuata, aka foxtail agave, lionstail agave or swan's neck, is a long-leaf perennial succulent native to Mexico. The nicknames refer to the unusual flower this agave produces. Agave attenuata gets big and may need a bit of space. Individual rosettes can grow to about 1.5 meters in height and 1 meter in width in good conditions. However, this plant spreads via offsets and can form huge clusters once they start growing to size and produce offsets of their own. The leaves grow out of the central stem and form a rosette shape. They can get about 90 cm long and 20 cm wide. Unlike most other agave, the attenuata is unarmed and does not have sharp spines on the tip or running along the edges. This makes it a friendlier choice if you have pets, however beware the sap as it can be toxic. The colour is light green. New leaves are green-grey and once they unravel faint white vertical lines run down. When mature the colour is a slightly darker green. The stem is brown. Many superb cultivars, usually variegated, exist and are a great alternative if you seek something a little different. Some can be white variegated while others have yellow tones. Agave attenuata is a versatile succulent and will grow well in sun, part sun and even full shade outdoors. Despite it being tolerant of shade, it's likely to struggle indoors unless it is grown in a super sunny spot, but it may not be happy even then. Attenuata will grow well in the garden as well as pots. If you're growing this plant in the garden, do allow for some spread as it can take up quite a bit of space. Although offsets can be taken off in order to control the size, even one rosette will get big. It can however be tamed by planting in pots. Once the agave becomes rootbound, it will not grow very much though do make sure it has nutrients as very rootbound, nutrient depleted plants can start losing leaves. Agave attenuata is tolerant of many soil types but will grow best in succulent potting mix if planted in pots and well enough draining garden soil in the ground. When planting in the garden, mix in and work through a bag of any potting mix. This will help break the soil up and allow the roots to spread easily. While attenuata is a succulent and will go without water for a long time, it deals surprisingly well with overwatering and abundance of rain. In pots, water when the potting mix has dried up from previous watering. During hot summer, this may be every few days to avoid leaves drying out. Garden plants can be mulched to help with water retention. This is not going to harm your agave and will help the soil to stay healthy. Agave attenuata will do best in subtropical and warm climates. While very hardy, it may suffer sunburn during extreme heat waves when exposed to direct sun. Advanced plants will always fare better than smaller, less established ones. This succulent is not very frost tolerant either and will get wilted leaves when frost settles. It's not suitable to be grown in cooler climates where frost and snow are a frequent occurrence during winter. Agave attenuata can easily be propagated from cuttings of offsets. Seed propagation is also possible but may take a long time to grow a decent sized plant. I believe agave do not propagate well from leaves if at all. If your attenuata is having trouble producing pups, you can encourage their growth either by beheading or more drastic technique called coring where the meristem is nearly destroyed and leaves on one side cut off. Let me show you how. I'm going to demonstrate on this variegated agave as there's not much point doing it with any of my attenuata agave. They have lots of pups and I don't need more. But the principle is the same for all agave plants. Basically, coring involves removing the central growth point and digging into the core. This will kill the meristem and force the plant to grow more offsets, much like beheading wood. This is a great technique if you have a rare variegated attenuata and want loads of pups. 
it's pretty brutal and if you don't feel comfortable doing this it may be best to not attempt. If coring is done in the wrong time, for instance in the wrong season, it could well kill the plant. Now we've cut out the central growth points, we dig. The hole needs to go almost to the ground level. Do make sure you wear gloves for this as a gov sap can irritate skin in some people. If like me you decide to do this with an armed agave, glove will prevent it stabbing you a billion times. It's very important to sterilize your tools. I've dunked mine into methylated spirits for a couple of minutes and let them dry out. The last thing you want is to introduce some sort of disease deep into the plant. A Stanley knife is a great tool for removing the center and leaves but you'll also need something to dig deep into the stem. Before I start digging in, I'm going to remove leaves on one side. This is where the pups will grow the most. These leaves are very tough and require some force to get them off. I'm going to see if they can be propagated, but all the literature blogs and previous attempts suggest that agave do not propagate from leaves. But you never know. Coring or any type of propagating should be done in the growing season. Spring and early summer are best, but do be careful of strong sun and heat waves in summer as it could kill the plants as well as very small offsets. Shade cloth can be used to avoid sun damage and burns. After hacking the leaves off, I now have better access to the core. Let's dig in. I'm using a wood carving tool, but anything with a sharp point will do. You can even use a drill with a bigger drill bit, but do take care to not go too deep. After the wound has dried out, I'm also going to repot this agave into a slightly bigger pot to give it extra nutrients and allow the roots to grow a bit more. This should provide extra energy needed for growth of new offsets. Rootbound plants may have trouble regrowing and could die after coring because they can lack the energy to repair and produce new offsets. And that's one caught agave. I'll do an update once the offsets start growing. A much less drastic way is to simply remove any offsets growing at the base. These guys are quite small but even large rosettes can be cut off to propagate. If the offset is easy enough to pull, do that as it's very likely it will already have roots which will help with establishing. If they are difficult to pull, cut them off, otherwise you can damage a lot of leaves, they are quite fragile. This little one is not budging. The Stanley knife is a great tool to cut through the stem. After separating, make sure to let the wound dry before planting for at least 24 hours to avoid bacteria or disease getting in. Bigger pups like this can be planted straight into the garden. To plant in the garden, simply dig over an area and break up any big lumps. You can also add some fresh potting mix to the soil so it's easier for the little plant to establish. Make a hole deep enough for the roots, plonk the agave in and cover with soil. Now, this next part is optional as many people don't like mulching succulents, but in my opinion mulch is fabulous for keeping the soil healthy and I do mulch all my gardens, succulent or not. There's one pest that absolutely loves agave at Nuata. The snail. These guys along with their cousins the slugs can cause some serious damage especially on younger plants and pups. During the day they hide in between the leaves around the base where it's cool and moist. At night they have a grand old dinner party. Other pests such as caterpillars, grasshoppers and weevils can also cause damage to the attenuata. Aphids and mealybugs can sometimes attack as well, especially young offsets and potted plants, but they are not as common.
The flower on agave attenuata is very impressive and absolutely huge. It can reach up to 3 meters in height. Agave flower only once and the flowering rosette dies with the flower. However, by the time the attenuata flowers, it would have produced loads of offsets as it can take up to 10 years to bloom. The sap in attenuata's leaves are considered mildly toxic if ingested. At higher amounts, they can cause irritation and diarrhea. The effect on adults is likely to be insignificant, but may cause harm to smaller pets or children. And that's it for today. I hope this video was useful and if you'd like to add anything or would like to ask a question, you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents, hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.